uh. Number four Jordan souls to the flow, stepping through the elevator door. Select a level that I wanna be on. One push of a button, be gone. Doors open in the living room of my home. Penthouse I own, I got it on my own. When I'm gone, engrave that phrase on my tombstone. Hey guys, it's David Hill, also known as Nutrition Dave, here to answer the PSP Nutrition question of the week. And that question is. Yes, I do lift. Or I did lift. I was a bodybuilder. Now I'm a nerd. So there you go. So the real question is, how does whey protein affect blood glucose and insulin? So this is a two-part answer. Uh, whey protein affects insulin like all other forms of protein. Not a lot of people realize this, but protein will elicit an insulin response. So what's in protein that's causing this increase in insulin? And the answer is a leucine. But we'll get back to that later. So what are the effects of whey protein on blood glucose? And we will uh, term things uh, using the glycemic load or, or get a reference of where things uh, are. And so we'll start with whey protein. Uh, we'll do 70 grams of whey protein in a shake. And the glycemic load of that is 7. And to give you kind of a concept of where that falls, we'll take a russet potato and the same quantity and weight as the whey protein isolate, uh, the glycemic load is a 10. So we have a three point difference between whey protein isolate, whey protein concentrate, and uh, russet potato. So not a, a very big difference at all. So really we could say a, a russet potato and whey protein have a similar tendency of cre increasing blood glucose. So what are the ramifications of this? You know, is this a bad thing? What's going on here? And some of you might be thinking, oh, I know what it is. It's a gluconeogenesis. You know, the elevated uh, levels of protein are being converted into glucose, and that's why we're seeing a, a, an increase in blood glucose. And this thinking is wrong. And so this rapid increase in insulin is not a direct effect of an increase in blood glucose, but rather whey protein, which caused the, the greatest amount of insulin in that chart early that we saw, uh, will actually have a tendency of decreasing blood glucose after ingestion. So what's the culprit here that's raising blood glucose? Um, and when we look at whey protein and the ingredients, you know, you have whey protein, but you also have sometimes have all these uh, additives. And some of them can, you know, are maltodextrin, uh, some of them are uh, acesulfame K, uh, sucralose is a big one. So we'll take sucralose and we'll, you know, see what the glycemic load of, of sucralose is. And for 100 grams of sucralose, uh, like we did with the 100 grams of whey protein, which contains 70 actual grams of protein, and the 100 grams of uh, the, the potato, the glycemic load is 56. So let's think about our whey protein shake was a 7, the potato was a 10, and 100 grams of sucralose is a 56. So we kind of found a, a culprit here. So it's not like manufacturers are taking 100 grams of sucralose and adding it to one scoop of protein. They're using far less. Uh, but that even that small amount of sucralose they're using to sweeten their product is actually increasing the glycemic load to what you see you know, being a 7. So we found our contributing factor that increases the uh, glycemic effect of uh, whey protein. But Dave, isn't this a good thing? Don't we want carbohydrates or glucose to increase protein synthesis? Uh, the answer is no. And really it doesn't matter. Um, it's been demonstrated in a lot of different studies that combining carbohydrates with protein does not change or increase protein synthesis. And what, really what we're looking for is an even more drastic effect on, on insulin secretion than carbohydrates can contribute alone. So Dave, does it matter that my protein might make my blood glucose increase? No, it doesn't matter unless you're diabetic. And in that case, if you're very sensitive to uh, blood glucose uh, elevations, then I would recommend a protein that's sweetened with stevia. Uh, and stevia has a glycemic load of zero. And so, uh, really, it is a great alternative for individuals that are getting ready for shows, um, that are looking to suppress glucose as much as possible, and also diabetics. I don't like to plug a lot of products because I don't want to sound biased, but 
a really good product that is sweetened with stevia is uh, with whey protein isolate from uh, Han Nutrition and there will be a link on the bottom uh, so just check them out. So with all this in mind I'm going to lay out a post-workout cocktail that really helps to increase protein synthesis and there is a lot of evidence supporting this cocktail and uh, we'll kind of go through it. So first as soon as we're done lifting and or working out and doing cardio we're going to consume 30 to 50 grams of waxy maize or a similar fast digesting carbohydrate. Uh, on top of that we're going to mix in 5 to 7 grams of leucine. And so we're getting back to that leucine. So this will drastically increase insulin within 15 to 20 minutes. And so we, we want to wait a full 30 minutes before we introduce our protein. It can be whey protein concentrate, it can be whey protein isolate, it can be whey protein hydroslate, whatever one you fancy. And what this uh, carbohydrate or waxy maize and leucine is, is doing is you're, you're invoking insulin response from the carbohydrate. Uh, you're getting uh, partial leucine absorption, and leucine has also been shown to increase insulin secretion in the pancreas after ingestion. So we're working with a lot of insulin here. And so when we introduce this protein, now we have an environment that's suitable for increased protein synthesis. But Dave, I thought you said co-ingesting carbohydrates with protein will augment protein synthesis. This is true, and you can achieve an increase in protein synthesis without the added carbohydrates but we're trying to elicit the greatest insulin response possible. And that is achieved by combining protein, leucine, and carbs. And as you can see by this table, the higher elevation bar is seen with the low carbohydrate, high protein meal. So it does, carbohydrates and protein together have a better effect on increasing insulin than higher carbohydrates and low protein or carbohydrates by themselves. So what we're trying to replicate here is pharmaceutical insulin, uh, which is also popular to, to inject post-workout. Uh, this will provide similar benefits as we just discussed, but this way is far safer uh, for rookies, uh, people who are trying to get into the sport, uh, people that are, are starting to get really serious about a program and, and adding lots of lean tissue. And Really, I've seen this in kind of my own practice, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, with individuals that I've, I've helped. Um, we've implemented this strategy, and within two weeks of doing this, they have a two-pound increase in lean mass. Uh, so, you know, yes, it looks good on paper. Yes, there's evidence that supports uh, this increase in protein synthesis, intramuscular protein synthesis. But really, I've seen real life effects after implementing it with some of my clients, and the results are there. So that's it. I also want to thank Jamal Muspa out of Metroflex Gym uh, for the idea of this video. Uh, they're doing some really big things out there in Phoenix. Uh, check them out. And I want to also apologize to Matt Porter and Ian McCarthy for running out of time. Uh, we'll try to book you uh, next week. And please subscribe if you like the info. I do a tough guy. Swag. 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 What's really wavy, man? It's Josh P's Ain't Shit Funny. I'm here with my young boy, Casey Veggies. Been shitting on y'all niggas since 06. They know. They know.